Hey guys, today I'm going to make a Pat Max style video. I think we all miss this content, so I hope my video gives you guys something similar you can sit back and enjoy. If you see this, please send him this video. That'd be really cool if you end up seeing it. Now, let's begin with the video. Super Mario is a very popular franchise due to the popularity of its video games released throughout the years. However, Mario isn't just known for its video games. Mario merchandise has been seen in many different categories. There's Mario plushes, Mario cereal, and even Mario soup, believe it or not. But one of the most popular Mario merchandise types has to be the figures. Mario figures have existed for as long as the character itself, but a common theme for all of these figures are that, well, they look sort of off. Sure, you can tell it's Mario, but for a lot of these, they just looked kind of creepy back in the day. But in 2004, a certain company would raise the bar when it came to Mario figurines. And with that said, here's a look back at the Ben Presto Super Mario figure collection. Now, before we begin, just to know, I'll only be covering the 5-inch figures today. Other sizes were released in 2-inch, 3-inch, and even 9-inch scales, but I personally only really care for the 5-inch figures. Now, with that being said, we can begin. In 2004, toy company Ban Presto released these figures as UFO catchers in Japan. And believe it or not, these were actually Mario Party branded figures at first. So, are these like the figure versions of the Mario Party 5 plushes? Well, anyways, the only figures to have been released with the Mario Party branding were Mario, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, and lastly, Goomba. These figures were apparently really popular, so Ban Presto repackaged them under the Super Mario characters figure in Blister series and made many more characters throughout the years. Though these were only exclusive in Japan for a while, and the only real way to get them was in UFO capture. These were really cool though, it was the first time a Mario figure actually looked like Mario. Well, kind of. The sculpt was spot on to Mario's design during the GameCube and Wii eras. So, you must be wondering, why were these only released in Japan? Well... In 2008, toy company Popco made a deal with Ben Presto to release these figures worldwide. These figures included Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, and lastly, Toad. These figures came in red bubble packaging that looked super nice. On the left, you could see a standard render of Mario jumping. On the right, there's the Super Mario logo with the figure collection written underneath. On the back of the box, it showed all five figures to collect, as well as a 6 plus rating, probably so the parents wouldn't buy these figures for their toddlers or something. Something I like about the packaging is the use of the font. It's a really nice looking font. It's actually the same font used for the Amiibo logo, but I'm just glad they didn't cheap out and use a different font. God damn it. So yeah, these figures were re-released a lot with different types of packaging. Some of these even tell you to collect them all. What is this, Pokemon? Also, these were apparently less safe for your kids now. They're now 7 plus. Well, not sure how these aren't any less safe than these, but I digress. I'm now going to go over each figure in detail, as well as their price now and rarity. First up, we got Mario. He looks super nice, and as I said before, one of the first Mario figures to actually look like Mario. His proportions are perfect, and the paint job, well, at least on mine, is really good. Though not all of them have the best quality control. I actually remember buying this exact Mario figure in 2016 while I was at GameStop. And yeah, it looked like a total bootleg. I know it wasn't, but man was the quality control terrible on that one. Though 2016 was years after these figures were still being manufactured, so maybe my GameStop just had extra stock. But anyways, back to Mario. I actually own this figure as well as the other four characters as a kid, but these all ended up either broken or lost. My only real problem with Mario, which is a problem seen with all the characters, is how easy to break they are. I mean, Mario isn't really as much of a problem with this, but the other characters definitely are. Another potential problem many people have with these figures is just the lack of articulation. I personally don't see this as a problem because I keep them on my shelf anyways, but I digress. Now let's move on to Mario's value. He's very common on sites like eBay for pretty cheap. Heck, there's a bit on eBay at the time of me writing this script that goes for $4 plus $5 shipping. That ends in 20 hours, and it has zero bits. Most of these guys are definitely not very sought after, which is nice when trying to collect them. Average price for this guy is probably around $5 used to about $30 new. Most listings for this guy are usually around $20 if you want it new in box. 
A reason for why this figure in particular is so popular is because of the cute Mario Brothers since they've used this particular Mario figure for all of their videos. This is one of my favorite Mario figures ever made, even if it's slacking compared to some other figures like the SH Figure Arts Mario. But to be fair, I prefer Ben Presto figures over World of Nintendo figures released by Jack Specific any day. As a kid who wants a Mario toy to play with, sure, I'd recommend the Jack's figures. But as a collector, the Ben Presto ones just look so much better on your shelf. That's enough about Mario, let's move on to the other characters. Next up we got my boy Luigi. Luigi is sculpted great and everything looks as it should. I swear, these figures are just Nintendo's models 3D printed or something. The accuracy is incredible. Luigi is also taller than Mario, so that's good. Overall, this is a great Luigi figure. Luigi's head is pretty loose on the figure and if you're not careful, it will come off. Definitely an issue, especially for a kid who wants to play with it. Also, on mine specifically, the arm is very loose, but that's probably just mine. Yours probably won't have that issue. Besides that, I really have no more complaints. Now let's get on to Luigi's value. Luigi is overall pretty common to find. Most go for around $20 to $30 new in box, but you can find them for much less if you want them used. Remember, these figures aren't exactly vintage yet, but since they stopped being made around 2014, they will become more and more rare as time goes on. Next up, we got Yoshi. Yoshi looks great, and he's in scale with Mario and Luigi. He does look a bit awkward from the front because of how big his nose is, but that's accurate, so I can't really complain about that. I don't really have much to say about Yoshi besides, well, it's just a great figure. Now, Yoshi's rarity. Sorry if I sound repetitive, but he's also common. You can also get him for about $10 to $15, though I have seen him go for more or less. I would recommend you get all these figures new and not used due to bootlegs, but more on that later. Next up is Toad. This Toad figure stands at about 4 inches tall, which makes him stand correctly with other characters. I actually don't own this guy or Donkey Kong yet. I only own Mario, Luigi, and Yoshi as well as two other characters, but I'll get to them later. I do plan on getting Toad fairly soon though. He's just a really cute figure and yeah, he looks really good. Overall, Ben Presto did a great job on him. As for Toad's value, I'd price him about $5 to $15. He's probably the most common figure though. It's really hard to say for sure. I'm really hoping this video doesn't make these guys harder to get, but I highly doubt that. But yeah, you shouldn't have a hard time trying to get Toad. Now lastly for the original set we got Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong looks great, though he doesn't scale right when compared to Mario. They have him in a pose where he's kind of slouching on his two fists, but I think he's a bit too small. When you get this guy new in box, he looks kind of awkward, but that's not how you're supposed to pose him, so it's fine. He looks great, and he even has fur detail, which is a nice touch. This is a really good Donkey Kong figure to say the least. I plan to get him soon to add to my collection. As for his value, he's actually quite pricey when compared to the other figures for some reason. Most go for around $30 to $40, sometimes more or less. $40 is about the most common price I see for this guy, and that's kind of a bummer. He's pretty expensive, and since these figures are old, his price will just go up and up as time goes on. But still not a terrible price, to be fair. That concludes the original 5 characters Popco released in 2008. But that's not all. I mean, did you see the thumbnail? We have plenty more to go over. Let's start off with Global Holdings. It was Toy Fair 2011 and toy manufacturer Global Holdings showed off a bunch of Mario merchandise, which includes some more 5-inch band presto figures. The figures included were the exact same, except this time it didn't include the Popco logo since they were no longer involved. They were also now packaged in a new box this time with a different Mario render. Quite a few new figures were also released. Those being Wario, Fire Mario, and 7 more Yoshi colors. However, only 4 colors of these Yoshis were actually released. Those being light blue, yellow, pink, and red. Blue, white, and black were for some reason never released. But what's really strange is not only were these Yoshi colors never released worldwide by Global Holdings, they were also never released in Japan by Banpresto. I do not know what, why the reasoning is for this, and it is quite weird to think about. What's even more strange is that if Toy Fair never existed, then we probably wouldn't even know about these different color Yoshis at all. 
Well, starting off with the other colored Yoshi, I'm not going to go in detail about them since they're literally just three colors of the same figure. Just to know that they are a bit harder to find compared to standard green Yoshi. Next up, we got Wario. One of the last Ben Presto figures to actually be original. Wario scales greatly compared to Mario and Luigi. All his detail is here and he looks great. There really aren't too many Wario figures released in this size, making him pretty unique. An issue with him is that his feet are probably going to pop off if you mess with it too much. But he's a great figure and that's all I really have to say about him. As for Wario's value, I actually rarely ever see this guy go for sale. I was lucky enough to find one on eBay for a good price. Mine was sold to me for about $20, so I guess I'd price him around there. Wario was only ever released in this packaging. If you find one that's in a bubble packaging, it's fake. Well, probably fake. Other countries such as Spain sold many different figures in the bubble packaging. Even the 9 inch figures, which here in America were never sold in the bubble packaging at all. So if you see a Wario in this packaging, I recommend you get him before he's gone. Next up, we have Fire Mario. I don't own this figure, but it's basically just a Mario recolor. He too was only released in the box packaging. I haven't really seen any listings for him, and I don't really know what his value would be. So he's pretty rare. I only know he exists due to archives of old listings. That, and of course, Toy Fair and YouTube unboxings. As far as US release figures, that's everyone. Though we're not done yet. You see, in 2012, Goldie, an Australian toy company that was already distributing these figures, decided to make their own line of Mario figures called the Super Mario Large Figure Collection. These were released in America and as well as other parts of the world. These figures included redesigns for the original five characters as well as two new characters, which are Koopa Troopa and Princess Peach. These figures were not made by Ban Pesto, though I still wanted to include them in this video. I mean, they even used the same packaging as the Ban Presto ones, so I just thought it would be right to include them here. Let's first quickly go over the five redesigns of these characters. Mario now has an articulated head, which is nice, but overall these figures just don't look as good as the Ben Presto ones. I mean, they're not bad, but definitely a downgrade. Donkey Kong also looks kinda off to me. Luigi and Toad look almost the exact same, so that's good. Yoshi though is in an entirely new pose. I think it actually looks really good. You can't move his arms though, but... I really don't mind that too much. He stands out when compared to the other figures, so that's always nice. Now onto Princess Peach. She was only released in a special 2-pack here in America bundled with Mario. She was released by herself in other countries, though if you want to make sure she's legit, I recommend looking for the one bundled with Mario. I actually owned her as a kid, but of course lost it. It may actually be in my garage buried somewhere. So, I hope I can eventually find her. She looks great though. She has a flat base on the bottom, so she stands very well. She also has no articulation at all, so she's basically just a statue. Not a problem for me though, because I keep them on my shelf, but this may scare people away from this figure. She scales nicely with the other figures as well, and yeah, it's just overall a really nice Princess Peach figure. As for her value, she's definitely the hardest figure to find in this whole set. She's bootlegged like crazy. With most bootlegs, you can tell the difference if it's real or not just by looking at it. But with Peach, her bootleg counterpart looks super accurate to the point where you can't even tell if it's real or fake. So if you want to make sure she's real, I would highly recommend you get her new in box. As for her price, well, I don't know. She rarely ever shows up new in box. And almost all the used ones are bootlegged. I rarely ever see her for sale, so getting her is very difficult. If you see the Goldie logo on her, it's most likely real, but you can never be sure because bootleggers have no problem just slapping some other company's logo on their figures. Though I'll get into the bootlegs more in depth later. Next up, we have Koopa Troopa. Koopa looks great here, though he is quite big. When compared to Mario and Gang, his size just doesn't really fit at all. He also has little to no articulation, just like Peach, although his head moves. He still looks very nice and has all the accurate details needed. I actually do have the figure, but at the time of writing the script, he's still coming in the mail. I'll probably have him by the time this video goes up though. Overall, not a bad figure at all. As for Koopa's value, he usually goes for around 15 to $40. The fake version of him is pretty hard to spot, since just like Peach, it looks very accurate to the official one. 
Though, something I noticed with most bootleg Koopas is the lack of yellow paint on the shoe. If the sole of the shoe is yellow, then it's most likely legit. Though, I'm not entirely sure about that. Just don't buy it from China, and you should be okay. He is somewhat pricey if you want a new, but he's overall pretty common. We're not done quite yet. You see, two figures made by Ben Presto actually never left Japan. Those figures are Goomba and Fire Luigi. I guess we just couldn't handle the intensity that was Fire Luigi over here in the States. Jokes aside, let's get into these two figures next. I really don't have much to say about Fire Luigi. He's a recolor of Luigi and nothing more. He doesn't pop up often since he's a Japanese exclusive, but if you're trying to get one, just know it was only ever released in this packaging. Only listing I've seen for him was for $25. He also shows up in bundles with other figures for more money. I would highly recommend only getting him new since bootlegs can sometimes be hard to spot. And the last character we will be looking at today is Goomba. Goomba was one of the original four figures originally released in 2004. He looks great and I actually have him too. The only issue with him is how flimsy the eyebrows are. They could easily break off if not careful. His only articulation is the head, but I mean it's Goomba, what other articulation would you need? He scales nicely with the other figures in the set, he's overall a really nice Goomba figure. As for Goomba's value, he goes online for about $25 to $35. I actually got mine on eBay from Toy Woods Inbox for around $28. I was really worried it was going to be fake since it was a stock image, but nope. It was official and everything. Toy Wiz seems to have old stock of figures that aren't being made anymore, so they're a good source for figures like these. So yeah, that's all the 5 inch scale Super Mario figures made by Ben Presto and Goldie. Getting these figures can be really annoying, and why is that? Well, let me introduce you to bootlegs. Bootleg figures show up everywhere, but these Ben Presto figures are probably some of the most bootlegged Mario figures in existence. Some bootlegs can be really accurate to the point where it's hard to tell if yours is real or not. And other times, they're laughably bad. For example, look at these Mario Odyssey figures. And yeah, if you have any of these, they're definitely fake. Ben Presto never made Mario Odyssey figures. And Goldie never made Mario and Ging playing instruments. I mean, they are cool, I'll give you that, but they're definitely not official. The easiest way to tell apart a bootleg from an official item is if it's in a bag. If your figure comes in a bag, it's fake, no questions asked. As for bubble packaging, it's usually legit, though sometimes you have, well, yeah. I wish we lived in a perfect world where all bubble packaging figures were official, but that just isn't the case. Most, if not all, fake bubble packaging figures have the Collect Em All logo on it. Well, yes, some releases of the official versions have this too. It seems like all faked new in box figures have this as well. So if your figures box says collect them all, make sure you're positive it's legit. And now how do you do that? Well if it's of a character that wasn't in this video, then it's fake. Ben Presto never made a Toadette or a Morton figure. As for bootlegs of officially released characters, you can sometimes just tell by the eyes. However, some of them are just way too accurate to tell. Like Princess Peach and Koopa. Though I hope when you are trying to collect these figures, you look out for any messed up details or incorrections. Also, do not buy these figures if the listing is a stock image. This goes for all merchandise that isn't being made anymore. 9 times out of 10, if the listing is a stock image, it's gonna arrive to you being fake. If the seller shows the figure new in box, then you'll be fine. I hope my explanation about bootlegs will save some of you from getting scammed in the future. And that concludes a look back at the 5 inch Super Mario Ben Presto figure collection. It's an overall underrated set and I think it deserves way more love than it actually gets. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you liked my take on Pat Max's style of content. As I said in the beginning of this video, I think we all miss Pat Max, so hopefully this brings people a smile. Hope you all have a great day and take care.